Welcome back to Instagram vs Reality, the segment on the channel where we call out bad Photoshop practices and impossible beauty standards with science or just basic common sense really. As always, these videos are intended to be informative and are not aimed to target or slander anyone's brand. This week's submissions are from r slash Instagram reality. Let's warm up with some easy ones first. In this photo, if the bright red Lamborghini didn't draw all of the attention away immediately, you might notice that there's something a little bit off with her proportions. Zoom in, lo and behold, she's managed to bend space and time with the liquify tool. For the five of you watching that are still unfamiliar with the tool, here's a quick recap because it's a common theme in all of our photos today. In Adobe Photoshop, or its lesser known half cousin Facetune, a liquify filter turns the image into a thick pixel soup, allowing for parts of the image to be moved around and made larger or smaller in a steady, controlled way with a brush. The only downside and the telltale sign for most people is that moving something in the foreground disrupts the background too, as there isn't additional image data provided to tell the computer how to fill in the gaps left by the moved parts. A better way would be to painstakingly cut out the subject, morph the background and then paste it back in. Or in cases of high-end photography, take a photo of the background without the subject, one with the subject, and then cut out the subject. Now you have enough control to morph the foreground without disrupting the background. The issue with this method of producing a composite rather than just editing the photo directly, is that matching lighting becomes very difficult. In our other poorly done example, the balloons look like a dollar store Amazon ad. I mean, there's bits of it missing for no reason here. Not to mention that they all have the same light glare, even though they're in different positions relative to each other. I feel as if I'm being a bit too critical of what must clearly be an inside joke somehow. Moving on, I've actually seen this ad before on my own Facebook feed, although this image is from the subreddit. Believe it or not, morphing abs onto a body is actually pretty doable in Photoshop. If it wasn't, there wouldn't be multiple one-size-fits-all apps made of this process, but none of them are actually very good. There are a couple of caveats to a passable edit. Firstly, if your face is in the picture, it needs to be relatively lean. This and this do not match very well which is why understanding facial aesthetics is a huge part of Photoshop and editing. You'll notice that with virtually every edit on YouTube, they morph only the lower abs and pecs, leaving the shoulders and arms as natural as possible. Touching these aspects of the body would only complicate the edit if it's not necessary and they're already acceptable. It goes from being a simple ab Photoshop to a face swap onto a muscular body which is much more complex because the face looks very different as you achieve the magic 10% body fat. With the final product, things still look a bit off, where you have defined blocky abs, but soft arms with no visible bicep, tricep, and deltoid separation. You might even need to add those shadows in manually and make some additional Adobe gains, which are things that the app doesn't account for. My verdict on these body morphing apps is that if you're going to use them, just learn to use Photoshop instead and do it properly. There are so many fine technical elements that take time to look out for, and you're only limited by your tools. Plus the downsides of getting caught clearly outweigh the benefits. You wouldn't expect a handheld app to achieve the same results as a professional in any other field. This next image is one of my favorite type of edits. It's high res with good lighting, so it doesn't look like it was taken on the cameras that they use for Bigfoot sightings. The grass in the outer corners grows straight but near her contours to her body. These parts near her leg are actually somewhat believable in that they part outwards in just one direction, and could be due to her leg disturbing it before the shot was taken. This here, I don't think grass is meant to grow like a sine wave. What I like about the grass is that it's a visual representation of how the liquify tool is deforming pixels. In this region, it might be a bit difficult to tell, but the individual grass strands are much more compressed together as she's likely pulled this part of her body inwards, compressing all of the pixels together. Overall, there's proof she's edited her waist to be smaller, but this region here is a bit more dubious. In particular, this one large strand of grass curling inwards 
whereas the rest go straight up, suggests she might have also had work done on her thighs, but are much less sure as her dress here looks relatively untouched. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to make the thighs smaller without disrupting the dress contour. On the subreddit, the user who submitted this claimed that she actually used to look up to this girl for body goals. Granted that the subject in this photo is already quite skinny, there's still clear evidence of retouching. You can very clearly see the wave ripples rise up unnaturally here and not further back in the pond. For future reference, waves tend to travel longitudinally along the length of a body of water. So if for some reason it were to rise up randomly here, it should also rise up along the length of the remaining pond. Quite honestly, she would have gotten away with it very easily if she decided to just disturb the surface tension in the pond like she's done here to produce much smaller ripples behind her. Perhaps by throwing a large rock or making some splashes, if a smaller ripple like this rises up randomly, it's a lot less noticeable than entire bits of undisturbed pond contouring to her body. All I can think about in this photo is just how miserable the weather is to go for a swim. She can just edit in some sun like the other influencers. There's a lot of controversy going around with Madison B lately, so obviously I'm going to clickbait her for views. In the photo on the right, people are claiming that she's edited her waist to be narrower, but I disagree that she has edited anything in this photo. To show it, I'm going to bring out the big guns, different forensic tools that all look for the same thing, image artifacts. I've covered these artifacts in detail in multiple videos on this series, but again, a quick recap. When you disrupt pixels, be it with liquify, wrap, warp, or any other deformation tool, Pixel quality at those regions reduces as pixels shear. This means that they're getting squashed and stretched rather than being the same size. I have strong reason to suspect that this is simply just a case of good posture, because it's more than likely given that she's still leaner than most people on the right. Here is an example of an influencer showing us exactly that. Notice how she arches her ribs forwards and sticks her butt back, just like Madison, to spread the fat over as long of a torso as possible. Under an error analysis, you can see both the supposedly edited and unedited look very similar with nothing notable at their waist. I find this to be the most reliable way of looking for evidence of contour retouching as it shows potential outlines much more clearly. Here is an example of what an edited photo does look like where I clone stamped this poor guy's face around a few times. You can see regions of higher noise at the edges of the edited parts, as one would expect, as the computer is trying to figure out how to piece the edit and the original together. Going back to Madison's image, there are very little errors in both the unedited and supposedly edited shots. Now let me be clear before I get these comments, I'm not saying that it's not possible to edit this image to bring her waist inwards. With a large enough brush, you can move everything in proportion so bits of her clothing don't seem to unnaturally contour to her body. It's definitely possible, but I'm suggesting that given everything I've seen, from other influences showing how important posture is, the lack of image artifacts, and the background reflection being relatively passable, I'm going to give this one a plausible and say she didn't. Maybe I missed something, so let me know in the comments. This is a really interesting image to analyze. You've likely heard of this e-commerce clothing brand called Shine. Some say Shein, but that's a bit pretentious. Not too long ago, they got caught editing their e-commerce models in post-production in the same way that dollar store Instagram photos get caught, the dreaded bending walls. Surely, the people that edited this would have noticed that the lines don't even match up. This is honestly a really poorly done job on their part for a few reasons. They could have used the clone stamp tool, given that this is the simplest background you could possibly get, used the freeze option in Liquify to lock anything other than the model's contour in place, and given that they're a clothing e-commerce brand, it's not a good look when the clothes don't fit right on your own models, especially when you've been caught doing this in the past. On a side note, <laughs> I love her face in this, 
It's as if she responded to this whole kerfuffle in advance. Using the clone stamp tool, this takes a few seconds to line up the angle and clean up the edges using a brush, eraser or another stamp of your liking. It's quite easy but hey, Shine, if you're looking for better editors, I might know a few people.